what brought you to the direct the direction for your first product, uh, cleaning bongs or glassware? Well, it gets dirty, <laughs> and it gets dirty. Uh, and unless you have one for each day of the week, and you take a few hours at the weekend to do all your dirty work, um, mm -hmm. you end up with really a nasty little habit. It, it, there's bacteria, there's germs, mold, all kinds of problems with uh, using a dirty bong. Although sure. using a clean bong is about the best thing you can do for your cannabis and yourself. Is the show for me and you the one you love to listen to? And oh, you got your friends, see it through. See, laughter is medicine, too. Hey everyone, I'm Wendy Love Edge, and this is The Edge Show. The opinions expressed by our guest may not be those of A Edge Productions. This is season seven, episode 19, Clean Your Glassware. And I have an amazing guest host today. Welcome, Nikki Lolly. How are you today? I'm so good. Thanks so much for having me as your co-host. How exciting that is. <laughs> yes, I love chatting with you. I always learn something because you're such an expert in the area of cannabis. Um, so what's going on in your cannabis world, Nikki? Well, we have MJ BizCon coming up in Las Vegas, and that is going to be an exhausting yet full, <laughs> most likely show. Um, I'm there in Las Vegas, the 14th through the 20th, and there are so many parties and so many after parties and so many networking events that it's absolutely insane. I'm actually promoting one for the Hush House, and it's their first time in Vegas, and their event is really on the hush. You don't know oh. where the location is going to be until uh -huh. that day, but it's going to have so much entertainment and so much for the guests to do, which is a lot different than a lot of the parties. I mean, most of the parties at MJ BizCon tend to be very loud, very rocky, no place to sit, nowhere to drink, nowhere to consume. <laughs> and it just becomes very crowded, very congested very quickly wow. i think the hush house party is going to be a totally different vibe so i'm super pumped about that nice. and of course i'll be walking the expo floor with about thirty-five thousand other humans so <laughs> wow <laughs> thirty-five thousand! my gosh yeah, it's the biggest show in the industry however interesting thing i heard today was a lot of companies are starting to pull out because it's costing so much to just be a vendor and to just attend the show is like $900. If you actually want to go to the um, sessions that they have, the educational breakout sessions, um, just to walk the floor is $400. So, Whoa. but wow. it's so big and it's so much networking. And so yeah. is it a cost to go? Absolutely. But the people that come in, there are people that just literally fly in for the week and have private business meetings at alternate sites because mm -hmm. it's so costly and it's really overwhelming, but it's right. such a great event. It's almost like FOMO if you don't go. So <laughs> right. who wants that, right? Not this girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think it's really cool to have everyone together and I can understand you know, all the costs of absolutely everything have gone up with the pandemic and um, people love to blame our president. I, I think that's a mistake. Uh, really, you know, it's just, you know, supply and demand issues, uh, supply chain issues, I should say. Um, you know, it, it's really unbelievable, the pricing, what, what's happening with, in absolutely every area of our lives. Literally. And yet yeah. cannabis has experienced a serious drop in price from a supply standpoint, which is really extra crazy because when you think the demand for cannabis went up so much during the pandemic, mm -hmm. but yet the price came down for the growers. Yet at the retail level, most retailers didn't feel any pain whatsoever, but the growers did mm -hmm. because the supply became, they were buying more so the growers are forced to drop the prices, but at the end of the day, the retailers aren't dropping their prices. So mm -hmm. it's kind of crazy, but yet 
you our Thanksgiving dinner. I just heard something on the news. It's going to cost 13% more on average wow. for Thanksgiving dinner this year. Will that make us extra grateful, Nikki? I think so. <laughs> I'm extra grateful for cannabis. I can tell you that right now. Mm -hmm. Cannabis gave me my life back and I will forever be grateful for that plant because I'm grateful for, for myself, happy. but also that you, you found it um, because you're such a treasure to our community and such a brilliant educator. Um, you're so, thank you. But I'm just me. I just want to help people and I want to remove the stigma from the plant and I want to try and normalize the conversation and explain it in a way others can understand. I try and be a voice for those that don't have a voice, those that are too afraid to come out of the closet, but yet they're so depressed, they're rocking in the closet, crying, sobbing, and have no hope. And so they have a choice. They can try cannabis and maybe it will really help them and bring them out of that deep depression. But they don't know if they don't know. And right. so I'm trying to teach people in a way that they can understand and relate to instead of, I'm not a famous person. I'm literally just a normal human, just like everyone else is. But at the end of the day, people can relate to me and I kind of have a big mouth and I kind of <laughs> not quiet. I'm so glad it. you do. I'm so glad you do. So this episode, we're talking about cleaning glass, which when I first um, uh, got a message from Cara Cordoni about, about her uh, their new product, I, th I what ran through my mind is all of my dirty glassware, <laughs> right? And I thought, how wonderful to uh, have women create this product, first of all, and and all of the benefits to that, which we'll discuss in the interview. But um, but do you clean your glassware? And if you do, what are you using? Okay, so. I tend to break my glassware. I'm a pretty professional at that. Like the most expensive piece in the world that you can possibly buy. I have broken that. Um, I had the coolest space man, cool, amazing bong thing. Uh -huh. it, was, it was like 400 bucks, like a million years ago, right? And I broke it. So cleaning glass has always been a challenge for me. The way I broke it was trying to clean inside like, the bowl oh. like uh -huh. so this today I happened to be smoking glass because I was too lazy to roll a joint but uh, what I find is the glass in here gets so nasty uh from the resin right and it changes the whole flavor of the cannabis and I really want to experience as many of the terpenes as I possibly can but if your glass tastes like crap yes. your bud tastes like crap so I'm obsessed with cleaning when I actually do use, mm -hmm. use a bowl, but they tend to pile up in a huge drawer and it becomes this huge process of like clean the 40 bowls all at once. And I use 97% uh, <laughs> alcohol or whatever it is that I buy off Amazon and it's toxic as hell and salt. And then I, yeah. I do the soak, I do the rinse, I do the soak, I do the rinse, I do the scrub <laughs> and I break several of the bowl heads during that process. Wow. Yep. Just so obsessed with like making sure it's all gone. And I don't want to smoke alcohol afterwards either. Right. Right. So right. The rinsing process is just as important as the cleaning process in my right. estimation. Right. Yeah, I, I agree. Yep. In a, uh, Ziploc bag has been the streamlined task. I mean, they used to sit on the counter and stink for a while, but now I've like kind of streamlined that to the Ziploc bag and I Shake, 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 and then I have like forty pounds of salt in one bowl, and it's kind of gross. But yeah, yeah. It, well, it's you terrible. you definitely need to watch this interview. And yeah. coming up next, my interview with Lara Costo and Cara Cordoni. Joining me now are the founders of Minerva Minded SPC, Lara Costa and Cara Cordoni. They have created their first product, Ciro a bong cleaning appliance, and I am really excited to learn more. Welcome to The Edge Show, Laura and Cara. Thank you, we're Thank happy to be here. Thank you, Wendy. Yes, I am excited. So first, tell me a little bit about Minerva Minded, because here at The Edge Show, we are all about supporting women in business and environmentally minded businesses. Um, so what made you wanna kind of start a company 
when your first focus is really this appliance, but what, what kind of brought you to the need for the company? Well, the supply end decided that we weren't in the supply end anymore. Ah. Uh, and regardless of your history in the community or in farming or your knowledge, it is still a very difficult uh, place to fit. And so this was kind of plan B to farming for my family. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, yeah, you go ahead, Cara. Yeah, and I think, you know, one of the things Laura has a background as an electrician and mm -hmm. she had tinkered and solved all kinds of um, challenges. And so she had made this, you know, prototype and we decided we didn't really want to put even a very cool bong cleaner out there if it was just going to be another piece of garbage in the landfill mm -hmm. in a couple of years with more mm -hmm. plastic, more wasted components. And so part of creating the business was really, it's been an experiment in doing business in based on our values. So mm -hmm. SPC is a social purpose company. So we signed up with uh, basically like an incubator. Joe Marini is the like third woman on our team who's really mm -hmm. our like business brains. And, you know, we agreed that as we gain success, we will always have money to give back to the next women or minority or other people that aren't able to get funding, right? We've been bootstrapping. Mm -hmm. Right. That's yeah. so important and absolutely love it. That's that's what we really need more of. So thank you so much for taking that route. That's so important. Yeah, uh, and so to be supported in that by the team was really, you know, important. And so that's why we're like, versus just selling the product off mm -hmm. and having it made in a conventional way, let's build a business and, and make it in a way we can be really proud of. Beautiful. So what brought you to the, direct, the direction for your first product, uh, cleaning bongs or glassware? Well, it gets dirty <laughs> and it gets dirty. Uh, and unless you have one for each day of the week and you take a few hours at the weekend to do all your dirty work, um, mm -hmm. you end up with really a nasty little habit. It, it, there's bacteria, there's germs, mold, all kinds of problems with uh, using a dirty bong. Although sure. using a clean bong is about the best thing you can do for your cannabis and yourself. Mm -hmm. So for those of us, you know, you can't take a bong everywhere you go. Joints are going to be required for some of the things that people do and, and vape pins and that kind of stuff. But for the people that are home, like myself, um, or enjoy their home time with their glass, and especially for the glass community, boy, those people have, those people are wild about their glass. Mm -hmm. And this, uh, yeah, it was a need. We need yeah. to keep it clean and we need to be aware of what a dirty bong, the, the consequences are. Well, you know, it's interesting that you say that because I remember when I first, uh, I started using cannabis for the second time in my life, it really saved my life. I was very ill. And I remember the first time someone said to me, you need to clean that, <laughs> right? And, um, and, and, and let's get some alcohol and pour, pour, sit it in there. And, you know, I, I had this really uneasy feeling about that. It, it just doesn't seem congruent with what we're trying to do health-wise. Uh, do you have any information about that or thoughts about it? Well, I think alcohol is one of the preferred methods rather than, uh, you know, it, if you get a good quality alcohol, it doesn't take much. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no re reason to pour the whole bottle in or anything. But the problem is, is that alcohol has to be created at a factory somewhere that probably uses a lot of water and discharges a lot of water. The plastic bottle that the alcohol comes in also, that bottle has to be created somewhere at a factory that uses a lot of water and discharges a lot of water. Mm -hmm. And um, there's really no need for either one. When we think about recycling and stuff, we always think about what we're gonna do with what we bought. We don't think about the complications that got that product to us. And when we don't use that product anymore, all of that isn't necessary either mm -hmm. and and zero does not need does not rely on any type of single-use plastic 
additives, um, any of that. We use a, a biodegradable paper container for our soap. It's a little tablet. Looks kind mm. of like a Tums or an Alka-Seltzer. Oh, and right. uh -huh. yeah, there's, in fact, the dry soap works better, we have found. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, sanitation is the, the uh, physical process that happens when you run sound waves through water. And when you get them to the right frequency, they'll go all the way up the shaft of your bong. It's a lovely thing to watch. It's kind wow. of like the stoner's lava lamp. <laughs> yeah. I love that. <laughs> Look at that. So it's really yeah. compact. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's easy to use, I'm assuming. Yeah. yeah, it's just got one button, which is off and on, and it has a timer. So you can turn it on. It'll run for 15 minutes, which is... Mm -hmm. You know, if you're cleaning your bong every day, like that's going to keep it crystalline clear. You could. Yeah. Five minutes. Is it, five minutes is probably mean. enough, but most yeah. people are not cleaning it regularly. And if you have like a lot of buildup, you just let the timer run. Well, and once a week, bong, once, it'll turn once off. a week cleaning is going to be spotless in there. Yeah. But once but you I start, laugh. once you start cleaning it, you're like, oh, I drink wine. Has anyone ever handed me a dirty glass? Yesterday's wine glass. Oh my been, gosh, I would never thought about that. Wine. Right? Yeah. Yesterday's wine glass, darling. Of course. <laughs> you know. And so I think that once we make it accessible and easy to keep your bong or your glassware clean we're gonna prefer to do it it's really not that hard um and so yeah you know and and so it, it's useful and then we made the housing which is a plastic our dream is to make it of like a hemp plastic mm -hmm. um that's like our our like let's make this business work there's no hemp plastic um, appliance that I'm aware of at this point. It needs to go through certification, right? For being mm -hmm. fire, this and that. So some R and D UL certified. So so that's one of our fantasies is what if we were so mm -hmm. successful, we could pioneer the first hemp plastic. But oh even my gosh. Though, that would be amazing. Right? I mean, I yeah. Um I'm sure there's no one doing it. So you know, yeah, why not? You two, you've, you've already yeah, started with this. Yeah, it's, it's I, I hope someone beats us. Like, let's be like, yay, plastic is a consumer yeah. appliance is, you know. But what we did do in the meantime is um, put in an additive called EcoPure such that if you don't return this to us to be repaired, which is what you should do, it's designed to be repaired. That's part of how it's built. Well, it's also designed never to break. Wow. Well, I haven't broke one yet. And mm -hmm. so first it won't break. <laughs> Second, if it does, we want to repair it. Don't throw it away. If by accident, it does end up in the landfill or uh, in the ocean, it will biodegrade in 90 days. So wow. it is uh, plan B, right? Because we want to take responsibility for the product that we create. We want it to last you a lifetime. Anybody, we want to fix it if it's broken. And if it does end up in the wrong place, we don't want it to be harmful. So if we can minimize that. Um, and so that's what we're really excited about. Yeah, I mean, we live in a society where people do throw lots of things away unnecessarily, right? So it could happen. So I think it's amazing that you thought ahead with that and said, okay, if someone isn't gonna be responsible themselves or send it for repair or give it to someone else, you know, um, what a beautiful thing that we don't have to worry about that piece. Because let's face it, the ocean is filled with plastic. Um, you know, they're finding plastic in just about everything that we consume, it's everywhere. Um, it's frightening, really. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's really great that you thought that through all the way to the to the end, right? <laughs> um, so um, is this product affordable for people? Because, you know, we're talking about, you know, an industry where the medicine itself is getting quite expensive just about everywhere, right? As we come into it's full legalization. Bong. Mm -hmm. Wow. It's a price of a decent bong. 
Nice. Yeah. So whole uh, going, you know, we're we're launching this as an Indiegogo. So there's this huge opportunity for people to come in and really become the backers who are the investors who get the first round made. Mm -hmm. We're anticipating when this hits stores, it'll be at a retail price of $250. Wow. So if you count all the bottles of liquid and your whatever those things um we're going to be able to offer it on the indiegogo because it's direct to consumer and because it's like our first round there'll be 175. wow so, i mean both of those prices are actually really amazing when you consider that you're saying you know if it breaks we'll fix it um this is a lifetime we want this to be a lifetime product for you um that that price point is really wonderful yeah yeah so we've <laughs> numbers we're like we can do it you know um and yeah so the indiegogo is is up and uh you'll share the link with folks or yes we've got the link on the screen right now so people yeah, can get in on it right from the beginning and back this yeah. campaign uh we're talking about women in business, they're environmentally responsible, and this is a product that anyone who uses glassware will benefit from. Mm -hmm. So do you, have, uh, do you have any final thoughts that you'd like to share about bong cleaning, about, or I keep saying bongs, but it isn't just bongs, it's all the glassware, right? Right, you can put uh, <laughs> like a, you know, you can put it directly in your Ciro, but often we'll put, even like a little bowl and then mm -hmm. put some water in that and set it in here so you keep this all clean this is a recycled stainless steel bowl and this is yeah where you set set your bong if or I your bowl and put, put my your pipe, pipe in put my yep. pipe inside the jelly jar mm -hmm. that the jelly jar here that keeps your silo clean yep because oh. you don't want to have to be if it's if you clean directly in the tank you're gonna to have to wipe it out and stuff. And it's really designed so that you only need this much water in the tank. And then you set your bong in, the water level comes up around the bong a little bit and all of the power is transferred through what we call the barrier water or the, the, uh, the, the conductive water between them. Okay, excellent. It's easy to use, yeah. easy to clean. Simple. It's pretty it's easy science. to use and easy <laughs> to clean. And you know, we're really hoping that it will reach patients in particular who may be limited in their dexterity, mm -hmm. um, people where it, you don't want to pick up and put alcohol and shake your bong or mm -hmm. shake, you know, we have a friend with multiple sclerosis. He's like, this is for me. Um, we have older and older consumers who consume in different ways. You know, mm -hmm. I know a lot of older folks don't necessarily um, use a bong, but some of the old school ones do so they do and and they're more likely sometimes to use the glassware or want to roll a joint either way than a vape pen which you know kind of came later right um Definitely. but you bring up really good points so i'm an occupational therapist by background mm -hmm. and i've been thinking about this a lot um you know we're talking about patients using medicine and as they age or have strokes or um, you know, become weaker, they're going to have trouble cleaning their glassware. That's one piece. Also, you know, lighting it, you know, all the different aspects that go into using this medicine. So this would be really helpful also to someone who has some sort of disability, correct? Mm -hmm. As you were talking about. Yeah. yeah, that's, Willie says it's a complete game changer for him because mm -hmm. he, his hands are crippled mm -hmm. and he has helpers but his paid, paid helpers are not supposed to be cleaning his bongs, you know? Mm -hmm. So yeah, he said, I know. <laughs> well, <laughs> as an as an OT too, you know, I want people to be as independent as possible yes. throughout totally. their lifespan. And that includes use of cannabis, you know? Yeah. Um, I think the largest population we're seeing using cannabis as medicine are the aging population really for yeah. for on the medical side? I think it with full legalization, we see lots of young people um, who may not initially even think about cleaning their glassware and all of that, but they're going to come to that. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, 
Yeah. yeah. That'd be um, funny if it's like a wedding present for like the, the stoner couple where it's like, oh, you're yes. you have a bomb cleaner. <laughs> oh, yes. That's perfect. I see so many um, uses and needs for this product. So thank you so much for creating it. And uh, where can people get in touch with you if they want to learn more about it or have questions? What's the best way? Instagram is a great uh, communication tool. We will answer right back. It's at zero underscore Humboldt on Instagram. And it really is the best way. And we can feed you the email address there. You're going to get one of us all the time. And we'd love to hear from everybody. Yep. Excellent. And then go always uh, yes. you know, on the mailing list there and yeah we'll keep that community updated on Wonderful. progress so anyone out there that's interested um, please take a look at the indiegogo and uh, and consider this product and wonderful company with great values that definitely match with the ed show so thanks so much for joining me thank, thank you, you wendy how about that interview with Laura and Kara? Can you say Nikki Lolly needs one of those devices in her life? <laughs> yes. <laughs> From what you described. <laughs> yes. Maybe you would use the glass a little more if it was so easy and uh, to clean it, you know? 100%. 100%. Yeah. I can't tell you the times I've gone to visit someone and they're like, oh, hit this pipe with me. And I look at it and I'm like, whoa. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah same, same, like, I'm good. I'm good, thanks. Yes. <laughs> I already know it's gonna taste disgusting. So, I mean, I'm kind of a little bit of a snob of the cannabis connoisseur kind of thing, so. <laughs> I understand. I know you wanna taste those delicious terpenes. That's what it's all about, save those. Yes. And For sure. You can definitely do it with this amazing apparatus. And when it goes to market, I can't wait for it to really take off because being woman owned and women empowered and mm -hmm. they get that message. They understand we want our clean glass. And so, yes, <laughs> I believe so. Signed by fellow people that actually use the product is so important. So that's great to see. And I fully support their endeavors. Yes, me too. Well, uh, how can people get in touch with you, Nikki? I am on all social media as either Nikki Lolly or Nikki and the plant spelled out. My website is NikkiAndThePlant.org. I also have a YouTube channel, a link tree, and I am all over. You can pretty much find me anywhere. Always it's in true. my dots. Cannabis <laughs> my dots. Yes, cannabis did connect your dots, and I am so grateful for that. Thanks so much for joining me. Have a great week, everyone. Bye. Bye. The Ed Show is sponsored in part by 131 Inclusion Gallery, Lindsay Camp with Synergy One Lending, 